Previously on Badger in the Blitz. Government evacuation scheme. London, it's not safe no more. They want to put her to sleep. Run, Badger, run! And who do we have here? I've never met a real duchess before. This is Badger. She's landed on her paws here. Welcome to Cottingham Farm. What are you doing in here? I hate you! I hate you! Jack lurches towards the stove. No! The letter is already up in flames and impossible to salvage, but the photograph, made of thicker cardboard, hasn't caught a light yet, although the edges are starting to singe. Jack reaches in. The heat of the fire is hotter than anything he's felt before. He grabs a pair of toast tongs from the sideboard and carefully reaches into the fire and salvages the first half of the photo. But in pulling it out, he accidentally dislodges a couple of coals, causing several more to cascade down, burying the rest of the photograph in the fire. Luckily, he's managed to save the top half of the photograph, showing Badger's face, which he caresses. I wish you were here, Badge. I wish you were here. That night, Jack can't sleep. No wonder, really. He's still upset about what happened earlier. Well, I say night. It's more like the early hours of the morning. He looks around the room he's in. There are some oily engine parts for Mr Wetherill's spare tractor and five, six, no, seven sacks of onions, which, frankly, don't smell very nice. He looks up to the small window above his bed. It's a full moon tonight and the light cascades through the thin curtains. Trouble than it's worth. I've had enough. I can't... Just calm down, woman, for a second. Get in the shit. Jack creeps towards the door to find out what they're saying. He peers through the keyhole. It's just not worth the bother. I think you just need to calm down a little. What if he hears you? I won't calm down. I've had enough, I tell you. It was your idea he came here. I thought we could use the help with the work around... lot of help he's been so far... And we're stuck with him for... (gasps) Jack's accidentally touched the door with his ear. His heart is pounding with fear. Mr Wetherill's eyes are staring right at the door. His red cheeks and fierce eyes being anything but friendly. It's just the wind. He's never up before five anyway. Little hooligans. That's what Irene called them. She's had right trouble with her, too. Caught this one going through the post this morning, bold as brass. I'll not have a thief under my roof, and that's final. A shilling a week extra is handy. You can make that sell in a bit more milk. Nothing but trouble, that one. First it's the cows, then the male. What next? Attacking us in our sleep. I blame the lack of a mother. Rumour I heard she just upped and left. Ran off with a warden. I'm sorry, love. He's got to go. Jack hears everything they're saying. Try as he might, his eyes are now streaming with tears. He looks down at the photo of Badger he's still holding. You and me now, Badger. He turns it over, revealing the name of the barracks where Badger is stationed on the back. Jack tunes into the conversation from the kitchen once more. Don't be late for the train or the milk will spoil. Double load this time, isn't it? That's right. For London. (laughs) He doesn't care who gets it, so long as they're paying. Jack has a flash of inspiration. If the train is going to London, then maybe he can too. He gathers his few possessions and stuffs them into a bag. He takes one more look at Badger's picture. Just you and me, Badger. Using an upturned potato box, he reaches up to the window, swings it open and climbs outside. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Climbing onto the windowsill, Jack looks back at his little room one last time before dangling himself down and dropping to the ground. <laughs> he peers through the kitchen window and notices Mr Wetherill starting to put on his coat. There's no time to waste. Keeping low to the ground, he makes a run for the truck. As he reaches the vehicle, he glances back just in time to see the farmhouse door open the light from the inside spilling out onto the track that runs past the house. I'll have breakfast ready when you get back. Now there's a treat. Jack hurriedly pulls back a tarpaulin which is covering the rear of Mr Wetherill's truck, revealing a cluster of metal milk cans. 
each one about half Jack's height. He throws his bag in first and has one last look to check the coast is clear before he scrambles into the back of the truck, into a small spot between a toolbox and a milk can. He pulls the tarpaulin back over the top of him just in time. The ride to the station is bumpy and uncomfortable as Jack finds himself jostled between the cold metal of the milk cans. After a while, the road stabilises and Jack peeps out from beneath the tarpaulin. They're now driving along the main road into town. He retreats to his hiding place and takes out the photo of Badger. And as he looks at it, he drifts off into a daydream, remembering three years earlier. Here she is, poor little thing. And she survived the fire. Yeah, it looks that way. Where'd you find her? Oh, you know, that uh, empty place on Osborne Terrace. Found her inside. Can we keep her? Oh, it ain't as simple as that, son. No. I think we'll stay for a bit. What's her name? I ain't tagged. Sure she ain't a badger with that stripe? <laughs> That's just uh, See, like, it rubbed off. Let's call her badger. Mm-mm. Now, don't get attached. She ain't stay. But she might. Oh, God, Dad. She ain't claimed she can stay. Thanks, Dad. Coming round from his daydream, Jack looks outside again and sees that the truck is pulling up into the station car park. The sun is just starting to come up. Jack scans his surroundings. No one is about. He gathers his things and prepares to leave, when suddenly... <gasps> a shaft of light breaks through between the milk cans beside him. He freezes terrified that the back of the truck is being opened up. <coughs> the milk cans are dragged from the back of the truck one by one. Jack cowers in his hiding place and closes his eyes tightly, fearing what will happen if he's discovered and wishing he'd never left the house. Sorry, that's your lot, I'm afraid. There's only half a dozen left. The train's full with the load from Carnethby. In a rage, Mr Weatherall tears off the tarpaulin. <laughs> and comes face to face with Jack. What are you doing in there? Come here! Seconds later, Jack is tearing across the car park, his bag clutched to his chest, with Mr. Weatherall giving chase. Somebody help me! Go on, Jack, you can do it. In the distance, a station guard raises a flag. But Jack isn't listening. The threat of Mr. Weatherall, spurred on by the desire to be reunited with Badger, is too great to make him stop. Looking back, he sees Mr. Weatherall gaining on him. Quickly, grab hold of my arm! That's Lily Jones, a passenger on the train. She's seen Jack's attempt to escape and pulls him inside to safety, just in the nick of time. Badger and the Blitz is a Roxo production for fun kids, supported by the Audio Content Fund. <laughs>